I've been thinking about this situation all flipping morning. I'm a warrior of the wild. See the fire in my eyes. The amber leaves you terrified. And I'm guided, guided by the light. Every time you knock me down, I will turn it back around. Forged by the revolution's fire. Does, this, does it feel like we're at week seven already? Mossy Oak Turkey season 2024. I love this. You know, you, you start getting deeper into turkey season, you lose some participation. Uh, like Tom Kelly reads in one of his books, you know, the opening weekend at deer camp and it's March the whatever or April the whatever, it's packed. Everybody's there. They brought their cousin. He got a, and uh, week two, there's not quite as many people there. Week three, it's, uh, it's we few, we precious few, we band of brothers. You know, not everybody's a, a turkey thug. And you know, thug was not a bad word. That was an acronym for turkeys, hunters, united for good. But I just use it all the time. But once you get later into that season, it kind of does separate. Maybe Little League Baseball starting or soccer, whatever you got to do. Those people that hang into the very end, man, you don't want them hunting on your place. Well, that said... Let's go see who's hunting on your place or their place. Great content this week. Week 7, Mossy Oak Turkey Season 2024. Here we go. Hey, stand up guy, one ten toe. Big body pull up in a Range Rover. I can change the whole game when I say so. I pull up, shut it down, yeah, they know. Running this game in a game for me. I never switched up, no change in me. The only thing change of the season you go against me, then you know that you tweaking, okay? Cause baby, I'm him. I be on 10. Two stepping in the party, I do not stand. Watch out, move. Make a look at What's going on, part timers? It's March 16th. It's opening day of turkey season here in Northeast Florida. Me and Jacob are here this morning to hopefully get some guys on some big old gobblers. We've got Randy behind the camera. It's uh, really dark and the light's bright. I can't see if his hips are moving on this one or not, but uh, he's back there filming this for us. He's going to have a camera as well this morning. Hopefully he can get something on camera. Uh, Bubba is filming his pastor down back in Palaka, so he's not here, but good Lord willing, he'll have some good luck as well. So y'all stay tuned, and good Lord willing, we're going to get on some. I hope so. Hopefully it happens. Yeah, man. I'm ready. You ready? Let's get it. Part timers, from a hunting standpoint, applies to everybody. Whether you're a deer hunter, duck hunter, elk hunter, turkey hunter, nobody gets to do it full time. I mean, we would love to, uh, but we can't.
Shoot him. There's the one on the right. Get the deco, shoot him. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Got some good food. Huh? Just be quiet. They love to come back. They're not very scared. Hear that? All right, guys, it's 8 35. Uh, boy, we had an eventful morning. We got set up and finally the birds started gobbling and there was three of them hammering not very far from us uh, finally um, they hit the ground and messed around and called in two birds from across the food plot and they came right onto the decoys and we were fixing to try to shoot one of them and then all of a sudden they got a little wary and uh, i thought they'd saw us and then uh, i yelped to them and got in and those gobblers gobbled and they were incoming fast they ran those jokers off and they got to strutting around the decoy right there. Uh, when the time came, Mr. Johnny shot, and I don't know if his gun got knocked off or what, um, but they're just not, uh, it wasn't on. He missed them three times and they eased off, but we're gonna, we're gonna go try another place. So y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all, it's 11.20. We just got done eating breakfast. We, uh, we shot Mr. Johnny's gun just to double check, make sure everything was good. And we just got word that uh, Mr. Jim saw a gobbler, so we're going. We whipped it around, and we are headed over there to try to get after it. A good midday gobbler here. It was lonesome, so y'all stay tuned. This is Jacob's Ditch at Barn Hill. Man's dream of a place to slip in and out on turkeys. We took a vote and the opinion is that the new sheriff probably needs to get these kids here down here and clean it out a little bit. That's not me saying that, that's the general public.
<laughs> see how I had to take the top off the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a morning. That was a good hunt. Oh, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we had a different kind of adventure early this morning. Yeah. Didn't bring any feathers home, but we saw a lot of turkeys and, gosh, walking around looking, and Mr. Coleman called us and said, I see one. So he, we got around and sort of got in an area that he might have come to, and lo and behold, he showed up. About 30 and, minutes later. About 30 <laughs> minutes later, and I'm going to say, Part of it's cost this lucky hat. <laughs> he, he gave me this hat because I left mine in the. You really showed good patience on this one because he put you in a bind. Yeah. He came up to our left and then walked straight, straight to the right, stopped behind a little island of trees, yeah. and then he stepped out. And I'm gonna say he stayed there a minimum of 10 minutes At least. and did not move a muscle. At least. Every now and then he'd pop a wing. He was nervous. I was just clucking and purring and. Ernie cut at him and he gobbled, and I mean, he started walking, and then you could see him yeah. good because you couldn't see him for all that, and he did a great shot. What a gorgeous place to it's hunt. It's a beautiful place and, to you hunt. You know, and as we know, you did it for the kids, like yep. you've been doing for how many years have you done this hunt? Uh, probably 10. Yeah, at least. Yeah. I've been coming down here as long as I can remember, and you've been here since the beginning. It may be close between 15 and 20. I think somebody said maybe 17. Yeah. That's quite a commitment. Yeah. For, for all the people that do this for C Mark. It's fun to share it with a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sit up here and be about eye level with him now. <laughs> yeah, Randy, get my feet. Look at that. Joker's <laughs> 14 inches taller than me. <laughs> all right, part timers. We had a great morning today. Uh, most of the hunters bagged a bird, a couple of them didn't. Um, but man, what a morning. You had some good action, some top notch footage. You're gonna be uh, signing contracts with the stuff you got. Man. Yeah. Doggone yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> you had a great hunt though too. I mean, five I five long beards on. I mean. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. I uh, I forgot my tripod this morning. It was sitting in the back of the truck. We got to the blind and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot my camera tripod. And the lens doesn't have uh, image stabilization, as you can tell, Randy's hips. Oh no, he's not swinging them right now, so it's good. <laughs> but I forgot the tripod anyways. I had a little little stakeout blind that I just balled up and set it on top of that and I was it was, it was good to go. But uh, It still looked good though, yeah, it was all yeah. said and done, yeah. It was, it was pretty good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Improvise. You know? That's right. So y'all stay tuned. We've got some more stuff coming at you. Thank y'all for watching. You're watching the part timers. See that? Look how tall he is. morning folks it's april the second and uh back on another track of this lease that i got in this year so that i could hunt this week for a few days before we headed down to the kt team hunt by the way my schedule works this year and having to be in missouri so early in april it was uh, find somewhere we could hunt on private in Georgia or not get to hunt it at all. So, did what we had to do and we got us a little peace. This morning feels like turkey season. Yesterday was a disaster, but we ended up lucking into one. So, probably used all our luck up yesterday morning. But, um, this is, uh, we're here because I was here the day before yesterday and I heard a turkey in here about 10 o'clock. Had some hens. I think it was a whole little flock of turkeys, but I heard him in here about 10 o'clock. It was super windy that day. This is a hole that we're in. Big mountain range behind us here. So I'm hoping these turkeys were down here in this hole all day yesterday dealing with those. We literally had a wind advisory, so it was uh, pushing pretty good. Um, 
So that's where we're going to start down here in this hole, assuming they're roosted somewhere in here, considering that I heard him day before yesterday, and it was super windy yesterday. As bad as the weather was yesterday morning, it's that equally good today. I am not saying there's not a turkey here. Because I know there was one here a couple days ago. I'm just saying that he should be gobbling. Because simply spring mornings don't get any prettier than what we're experiencing right now. Every bird, every crow, every owl, everything is just going off and I ain't heard one. Thought I heard one, but I don't think it was because it ain't done it again. So. I don't know if the turkey I heard in here two days ago is dead. That's what I'm going to assume, considering it is beautiful. I'm going to pick a road here and make some tracks, do a little walking. But I ain't got far to walk, because it ain't like this place is huge. Let's go walk to this other corner, and we'll probably end the truck coming up with another plan. Well, it is uh, 8.15. This is almost when we got out of the truck yesterday. On the most unlikely of circumstances and killed a turkey. And today, we're getting back in the truck in much more likely circumstances than we ain't even heard a turkey. The difference a day can make. We're going to... Uh, scoot over to another little piece um see if we hear anything there do a little stroll about on the new track i'm pretty sure there's a tame turkey this house at the front has a tame turkey i think well, i came over here cruising around the other day i heard it it's back down our goblin again but it's almost one of those things you gotta flesh out to be sure. I've had some funny sounding wild turkeys before. This one just got that western turkey sound a little bit. I don't know what I would do if I yelp this turkey up. He comes in and he looks legit. Am I gonna shoot him? If he comes in and he's white, I'm definitely not shooting him. Turkey's probably not what you want next to your hunting property. Where how many hours has been wasted on that feller? I'm gonna uh, walk to the back of this place real quick. Shouldn't take too awful long. See if we can't turn something up. That road goes out of the back and goes up at the top and splur actually splits down at the low, but splits down low, but when you go to the top, it bends back to the right. It's a big private pasture over here, and that private pasture is where I saw that big flock of turkeys the other day. It was just one long beard, three hens, and 11 jakes. So, with the uh, sun coming up over here, it's casting the shade, so the shade should be on our side of the pasture. Well, the beautiful day, these turkeys should be more than willing to hop into the woods. So my plan is get to top of this hill and start trying to find them. There's a crow 
still picking it something. Right in here. See that opening up there? That's that private pasture. I'm gonna try to move up as far as I dare. The pasture goes back and as it, as it falls down to a creek bottom over here with some hardwoods in it, that's where I expect the turkeys to kind of drift that way, but we're gonna approach it from here just because of the accessibility. Those two hens came from way out in the middle of that pasture and drifted right up against the wood line and then walked down this way. Same place that crow's aggravating, so I just about wonder if the we got our strutter down there in the bottom of this pasture. Our crows were aggravating him and the hens just drifted over to him. two hens on my side and I'm looking at at least two more right there but I don't know at the same two or different two Got a couple woven wires coming through, so he's got his work cut out for him. He's marching. Hmm. We're gonna cover up. Still on the other side of that woven wire. We gotta get him on this side of that dang fence. I don't know if he left those two hens. Those two hens were going the other way.
And Joker came right in the woods like it was his dang job. <laughs> I thought we'd have never got that turkey in the woods. thought in a million years I took you left that field and come in these woods. Unreal. <sighs> Don't ever pretend like you think you're gonna know what they're gonna do. This is the lease all the pine timber, timber company land. It borders this big old private green pasture. I walked in here two days ago and saw a bunch of turkeys out in this pasture. I figured they had to be roosted on us, but I probably need to be talking to y'all this way, don't I? But there's the pasture. And he's out here to it. Two hens right in it. God, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Let me go get the other camera. I don't want him to start flopping though. If he starts flopping, I'll pick him up. They got a bad habit about when you touch them, they go flopping. Well, that was something else. Let me get this thing up here and talk to you. I should never pretend like we know what they're going to do. <laughs> that turkey crossed two woven wire fences. Unless they got a place down here on this low side to cross where they ain't got to like literally go. I don't know how he got across them. That's unreal. What a what a season in Georgia. <sighs> unreal. We came up. Oh, I love that feeling. Jeez, that feeling. Why do we get that feeling? Mm. Feather out of place. Can y'all believe that? You got some barred center feathers there. Man, he's pretty. Gosh dang, there's something on them wing patches. That's just perfect. This cotton fit perfect. Why do we get to do the things that we do? Dang, that's perfect. Oh. Dang it, boy. 
lazy boy couldn't make him any better than that. Whew. Thick pine straw. Well, I wish it wasn't here because I wish there was a fire run through here keeping that stuff knocked out, but it does make for a fine cushion. Oh, but that sun's done come out with them. Found us a little warm spot, so I reckon I'm gonna smoke a cigar just in case I do fall asleep. I'll have done, got to enjoy the fine taste of a nice cheap cigar on a beautiful spring morning, so. Let's get to it, say. Yes, sir. Mmm. That's a tasty one. I like him. The word obsession encompasses the mindset of everyone at Mossy Oak. We obsess over hiding from, chasing, and conserving the critters we pursue. In this episode, we listen to Mossy Oak's Cuz Strickland as he recounts his obsession with the wild turkey. This is The Obsessed. My, my dad was a life, I say life, but my dad was 20 years in the military. Worked hard, we moved around a good bit, but what his passion was, was fishing. And I tell people all the time, he was, he still, he was the best fisherman I ever knew that didn't have a boat. But that being outside, it just flew all over me. I was just crazy about all of it. I got into archery when I was real young. We used to have archery tournaments over at Duncan Park in Natchez, Mississippi, and the recurve bow that they gave me to shoot was taller than I was, but you know, I love that. And I, to this day, love the bow hunt. But turkeys, I, I just, I don't know why turkeys flung all over me. I've never been turkey hunting. My dad never been turkey hunting, never talked about turkey hunting. I didn't really know anybody that turkey hunted. The first person I heard about turkey hunting was our football coach at Natchez High, Ed Reed. So I started reading, and I can remember, clear as yesterday, I read this article about Ben Rogers Lee, who was clearly the first superstar in the hunting world, was to me. But he talked about going to Texas turkey hunting, and he went to cross this barbed wire fence, and when he pushed the barbed wire down, it squeaked in a staple and a turkey gobbled. And he supposedly called that turkey up sitting there squeaking that wire back and forth. And the more I read about that kind of stuff, I just got fascinated with it. So I bought a Lynch Jet Slate, I think it was called. It was a little square call, wasn't a pot call. And it had a square peg, and you could scratch on it. And I joined my first hunting club, which was north of Natchez there, $60 a year. And I, I had to save, I couldn't tell you how long I saved that to get $60. Anyway, they had turkeys. And uh, I had hunted them a little bit in the national forest out there. That was frustrating. There wasn't a whole lot out there. And uh, so I, I found some turkeys on this hunting club. And I can remember the first time I went, I had a turkey across a creek and I would squeak on that jet slate. And he'd gobble his brains out. And I called so much that my hand finally cramped like that. Had I known, all I'd have had to done was shut up and move down and cross that creek 100 yards down there, I could have killed him like that. But those kind of lessons, when you learn them yourself, they mean more to you. And I'm telling you, back then, there weren't hardly any people that turkey hunted, and the ones that did weren't willing to talk about it. You hear those kind of comments now, and you laugh about it, and about people, you know, wiping turkey prints out, turkey tracks out in the mud. Well, that's exactly how it was. There was no information. There wasn't no, uh, there was no internet. There wasn't Facebook and all that. You couldn't get any information. So I like that. I like to try to figure it out myself. And pretty soon I caught myself when I was bow hunting as much as I loved it, 
looking for turkey sign, thinking about turkeys. It just kind of morphed into what it is. <laughs> You know, I, I, I loved it so much, I ended up working in a sporting goods store. That's how I met Will Primos. We were, at the time, Will Primos was making mouth calls. And the first thing you know, I'm filming turkey hunts for Primos game calls. Hello, I'm Will with Primos. That small piece of footage you just saw is just a sampling of what you're gonna see on this video. Ronnie, let's tell everybody about how hard it was to get some of this footage. Well, it, you, you covered it first. You said it took a lot of luck, that's what it was, but, um. We used a uh, broadcast quality camera. Nobody had any idea it would be that impactful. I certainly didn't. And I never did kind of stop and think, hey, I'm making a living, you know, filming turkey hunts. It was just kind of what we were doing. It was before the outdoor industry was an outdoor industry, but uh, it was just kind of divine intervention, I think. You know, moving down the road, the first shot show that Toxie Hayes and Bill Sugg went to from Mossy Oak was in New Orleans. And I was going anyway. I had been going to shot shows. And uh, there they were, Bill and Toxie. They had a booth up in the dark corner of this dungeon. And they had bottomland wrapped around this giant column, which was in their booth. And I'm telling you, I stopped 50 feet looking at that bottomland pattern. I went, holy cow. I'm gonna kill every turkey in the home to the National Forest with that stuff. So we went down there and, it, man, I said something about turkey hunting and it was on. Because, you know, Toxie and Bill have been turkey hunting long as I have. And what a blessing that was. I didn't know it, couldn't see it coming at the time. I always say Toxie Hayes and Will Primos were two of the most visionary people I've ever been around. And I, I'm convinced they were seeing a lot of this way back in the day. I wasn't. I was day to day trying to make a living, trying to do the best I could. Looking back, it's like I got to meet so many people. People ask me all the time, I'm going to speak tomorrow night at a big event, and I'm going to talk about my favorite turkey hunt, and I got lots. I mean, it's hard. You kind of keep your family out of that equation, your grandkids. All my grandkids killed their first turkey when they were five years old. Now, how do you put that in words? You can't. You know, my wife, who wasn't a hunter, watching her kill her first turkey, how do you put that into words where you can't? So when people ask me, what's your favorite turkey, honey? I always tell them about Ryan Welch. Mossy Oak got involved with this organization called Catch a Dream. They're an organization that'll take kids on consumptive sports if that's their wish. These are seriously ill, very ill kids, and if they want to go hunting or fishing, Catch a Dream is there for them. But anyway, they got it all kicked off and they got a letter from this guy named Roger Welch and his son Ryan, who I think at the time was eight, had just had a malignant brain tumor surgery. And he was stuck inside a lot and he wanted to go hunting, turkey hunting with either me or Will Primos. Again, goes back to that truth one. I'm assuming they had bought the video and he was laid up Anyway, that was his wish. And they told me about that, and first off, I was shocked, because you think these little very ill kids want to go to Disneyland, or they want, this kid wanted to go turkey hunting. So I called Toxie, he said, make it happen. That's the way Toxie rolls. He didn't ask me, make a budget, make a plan, he said, make it happen. And I said, I'm taking them to Texas. I've never felt like that in my life. 
and it was just a three-day hunt, but the fact that I was able to take him back to his dad and his little brother with a dead turkey like that, it meant the world. I've never felt like that on killing a turkey or having one killed or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. You know, turkey hunting's one of those things, if, if, if you're in a room and nobody turkey hunts, or not many people, and you try to explain that activity to somebody, they laugh, they think it's funny. So I've always kind of been on a mission to explain to people what turkey hunting's really about. And it's, it, it's, it's the most epic thing. I tell people all the time, to me it's like better than going to Africa or anything else. There's so much to it. And I tell people all the time, you hear every conservation group, everybody that's concerned, we got to bring more people into this sport. And it's not a sport. It's an activity. As Gene Winslow said, it's not a sport, it's an instinct. We all have that hunting instinct. Turkey hunting is the perfect time to take somebody and introduce them to hunting and what goes along with hunting. Confidence, responsibility, stick to itness. There's a whole lot to turkey hunting. And it's the coolest thing about it is you can take, like I've, I've enjoyed so much with my grandkids. I had, I had girls and I didn't necessarily want them to be great hunters, but I took them hunting a lot. And the reason I wanted them to go hunting is because I wanted them to know where food comes from. You know, it doesn't come from Kroger or Winn-Dixie. If you get protein, something died. And I want them to understand that. I also want them to be able to understand the lingo at the supper table. And of course, they've grown up hunting. and Now they have husbands and families and everybody hunts and they get it. So that mission was accomplished. But you can take a little kid hunting like that and they can be so comfortable with you and they, they just they just get it. It's, it's the coolest hunt on the planet and it's interacting back and forth with something that's way more wary than you are. And uh, it's just the best time in the world to teach somebody. You know, I can remember my wife telling me, and this is before Mossy Oak and everything else, she would, cause you know, back in the day it was a struggle, but we were both working and I was, I got in some, it, tight spots at work from being late, you know, turkey hunting and being late. And, and she told me one time, she said, you're just obsessed. You're over obsessed. And it's true. And uh, I'll tell people all the time, yes, it's, yeah, I'm obsessed with turkey hunting, but more than that, I think the obsession just jumped all over me. It's just, it kind of, at some point, it kind of becomes who you are because it opens the conversations up. It does a lot. But like I'm saying, when you get to meet people like I've met, wounded veterans, and you talk, and they, they will change your life because you'll take guys in wheelchairs and they never complain. And guys with two prosthetics, and they never complain. It's like, you'll hear somebody complaining about, I didn't hear a turkey or that turkey was over across the lake. And I'm thinking, man, I just spent a week with five guys that didn't have legs. But you know what, they were obsessed. They were obsessed for that period of time with turkey hunting. Nothing, nothing does that more to people's spirit than turkey hunting. And uh, to say I'm obsessed, uh, that's, that doesn't do it justice. Next thing we want to talk about is a kiki run. A lot of times it's uh, associated with a fall call, but it is definitely effective during the spring too. I use the call a lot when early season, when I'm dealing with a, a big flock of turkeys, you can kind of emulate a, a lost turkey, a young turkey, kind of uh, appeal to that motherly instinct of a boss hen to get her to po possibly steer the whole flock your way. A lot of times that's the issue that you're tackling in the early season. It goes something like this. And it's a lost young turkey a lot of times. I mean, you're trying to uh, put that sense of urgency in a kiki. You've got the loud whistle that's supposed to carry a long way. And um, it can really appeal to that motherly instinct of a boss hen and get that, get that whole flock steered your way.
we have some gobblers gobbling over the ridge here in front of us. Me and Matthew came out here this morning, it's my day off from work. We come out here, we went on some national forest again, taking a few lessons at a couple different places. This is the second place we came to, we heard a lot more goblin than the first place. Pretty much every time a goose or a crow calls, these ones are goblin and natural voice shell there too. Gobble with that. It's been a good morning. It's been a good morning, the goblin pretty good. Hopefully I keep this up on Saturday. That's right, hopefully I keep up on Saturday. Well, in this episode of Dead End Game Calls TV, we're headed to the state of Virginia with the Presley brothers, Matthew and Tyler Presley. Now, I've known Matthew and Tyler since they were just kids as they started competing in turkey calling contests on the Dead End Game Calls calling team. Now, they've grown up and they've become excellent woodsmen. Let's see if they can get the job done on a piece of public ground and a piece of private ground in the state of Virginia. Alrighty guys, it is March 22nd. Me and Matthew came out here this morning, did a little pre scouting here for Virginia. It's a nice morning. We think we heard one. It was pretty distant off at the end of one of the trails here. It's been a great morning. Birds are chirping. It's beautiful out. It's nice and warm. We must have brought that up here from Florida. Right, Matthew? Yeah. We're going to continue our way down through here and see if we can find some more places to scout out. Hopefully we hear another one. It's been a great morning so far. This is Sunday, March 26th. Me and Matthew came up here to some national forest in Virginia. We we're trying to come up here and look at a couple of gobblers. Right off the bat, we heard one. We came a couple of ridges over. We ended up calling a couple more. <laughs> Had to pin down there for a minute, but kind of got out of there pretty quickly. But it has been a beautiful morning. The sun's coming out nice and bright over here. It's just been a really beautiful morning. I'm happy we have a couple located for the season. Yeah. When you come with low expectations, actually hear a couple, it's a, that's a great day. It's pretty awesome. It's Saturday, April 8th. First day of spring gobbler. We're heading to the spot. I had one roosted yesterday evening. I took a video of it on a GoPro, but uh, I dropped the GoPro on the way out of there, so hopefully we can pick it up and we can show you guys that footage. But it's a great morning, it's nice and still, it's, it's cool out. It is pretty overcast, kind of cloudy, so they might not be gobbling as much, but they should be gobbling. Should be a great morning, it's about 4 degrees out. Like Matthew said, it's a little bit overcast, so they might start kind of getting excited a little bit later. But the good Lord bless us for this morning to come out of here and go get these gobblers. Should be a great time, they look at four do this since ever since it went out last year. This is what me and Matthew live for coming out here to try to get to these turkeys. We're going out here to the George Washington National Forest this morning. Try to get some public land in.
Yeah, go. baby. Yes. Woo. Good shot. Yeah. He's a big dog. Thank you, man. Get on, get on. First opening morning, he didn't gobble very much. He gobbled like twice on the limb. And we heard some walking and all of a sudden spitting and drumming. Alrighty guys, this is the first day of Virginia turkey season, 2023. Me and Matthew came out to some public land this morning here in Virginia, George Washington National Forest. And Matthew came out here well, yesterday when I was at work. I worked until 9.30 last night and he came out here and roosted these gobblers. There was a couple of jakes with them too. He, we could hear them down yelping over there. This morning it was pretty awesome to be able to experience that too. And this gobbler, he only gobbled like two or three times this morning. He's quiet. He's pretty quiet morning. And he just did some, we did, we, we set up first and we heard him. And we made a little bit of move up, kind of above him a little bit, up on this ridge. And so we got a little bit above him. We got behind this log right here, which gave us good cover for the camera and us. We did some yelps, some snuffs, tree yelps and fly downs. Yeah, a couple fly downs. And the only one that really responded to us was a Jake. Yep, yeah, and that gobbler, he never gobbled at us once. Yeah, he really didn't. He never really gobbled at us at all. And it just, it was such a beautiful experience to be able to hear, boom. Yep. Because that's, that's all you heard. That's the he best never, sound to hear. He never gobbled any. You hear a little footstep like, boom. Like, oh. So it's time to get He's getting ready. close. Matthew pretty much saying, okay, Tyler, now go over here. This is where the turkey's at. To be able to have a brother that's willing to do that for you is amazing. I want to thank Matthew for that, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful morning. Beautiful, beautiful gobbler. Awesome now, it's have, now, yeah, now it's awesome Matthew's. He has three tags still. Yep, it's time to time to see if we can find another one. <laughs> yep, sounds good. Let's go get Matthew another one. It's been, it's been a very blessed morning.
been a great morning so far. We just called one of them into about 15 yards and made a great shot on it. But well, I'm just gonna sneak out here and get this one. This token one goblin about 120 yards off and Tyler starts to tag. So I'll sneak up here and get this token, see if we can get it back to blind. It's Friday, April 28th. It's been a great morning. I was able to harvest this beautiful Eastern Longbeard. We decided to make the road trip last night. We had been planning it for a while, but they were calling for rain on a forecast, and we decided to just make the trip anyways, and we set up a blind so we didn't get completely soaked. And we were absolutely blessed that there was a gobbler roosted about 150 yards away. We just set up completely blind, and he was gobbling good once he started gobbling. He gobbled a little bit late on the roost after it cleared up a little bit. But he was answering every call. We did a couple fly downs and he gobbled. But after a while, we gave him some time. Tyler called on the slate call. Within five minutes, he was making his way over here and we saw a head pop up. And we tried to do a little calling when he was at the decoys, getting his head up, and one started gobbling about 70 yards away. So hopefully, we can get Tyler on that one. He's off with the camera now and he's back on the gun. So I'll be videoing Tyler. And I want to thank Tyler for videoing me th this morning with this hunt. It was an absolutely beautiful hunt, great hunt. Just an absolutely blessed morning. What about these heads, right? It's just been a great morning. Couldn't be more blessed to come down here and have a gobble roost at 150 yards from your setup when you just came in here blind, not not expecting too much. And just the Lord bless us for this beautiful morning. The sun came out nice and bright. Gobblers were gobbling. It's still early in the day. We're going to be down here today and hopefully tomorrow. And hopefully we can get Tyler on another one and I can do some video. Sounds good. I just want to thank my mom's cousins, Baron and Bert, for letting them letting us come down here and hunt on their property. It's been truly, truly awesome for that. Now it's awesome. It's been a great, great, great morning. Alrighty guys, it is Saturday, April 29th. Me and Matthew have one roosted this morning. We're gonna go in there, try to get pretty close to it. We have a blind set up right where Matthew got his yesterday. Hopefully they're still in the same spot from what we heard last night. I believe he is, I believe he was on the roost. We're going there, hopefully he's gobbling pretty good this morning. It's pretty clear. Should be a great morning.
Oh, you got the shot. Huh? You finally got the shot. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Alrighty, guys. This is Saturday, April 29th. It's been a beautiful morning. The goblins were gobbling good. It was a little bit more overcast than what we thought it was going to be. But it turned out to be a great morning. This goblin was gobbling hard. Pretty much gobbled almost everything we threw at it. We called them up to this little to the neighbor's fence right here at one point in time when a bunch of cows came up over here. I guess they got interested in them. And then kind of pushed them back over a little bit and waited for the cows to go away. We got back on pretty hard again with some cutting and yelping. He would sit there hammering at it, hammering at it, hammering at it. And then I did a little Jake, Jake down yelp. And then he gobbled like probably 20 yards away from us. The next thing you know, he came charging into the decoys. He just started pecking right at the, at the Jake decoy here. And he just stayed there and stayed there. I was trying to cut at it, cut at it, and then he just kept on, he just kept on pecking at the decoy. <laughs> I was trying to save the save our the head of the, the decoy because he was always like, Fine. <laughs> it was a great experience. I was sitting there shaking the whole time. It's amazing I even hit it. We're only about maybe 10, 15 yards away, and then we we're right here where Matthew got his yesterday on my mom's cousin's property. It's I can't thank them enough for letting us come out here this year and after these gobblers. We've been a very, very blessed experience to come down here to Southwest Virginia like this and be able to have Matthew get, get on his right away like we did without having any knowledge of there being gobblers in here. We just kind of set up and happened to just be extremely, extremely blessed that there was one only 150 yards away. It's been a truly, truly great experience down here in Southwest Virginia. I just want to thank, thank the Lord for everything. Yep, just a beautiful gobbler, big old spose on it. I think that's the biggest post Todd's ever killed, pretty pretty Probably close not. to it. Yeah. But congratulations on your gobbler. Yes. You're tagged out in Virginia. Hopefully yes. you can video this, me some. This is number three, so Matthew's yeah. got one more tag left, so hope I can get back on the camera with for him and have more even more great experiences. It's just yeah. really, really awesome. Absolutely. It's a blessed moment. To have Grant kill one here, you kill one here, and me kill one here at the yeah. all at the same spot. It's a it's a great spot. Couldn't be couldn't be more blessed. It's, it's just an absolutely beautiful view behind yeah, beautiful, it. Beautiful, beautiful view. view. The sky is opening up and the sun is shining through. It's a great morning. It started off a little bit cloudy, but it's just a beautiful day. And just absolutely blessed to be able to host a great gobbler. That's right. One of the things I love most about the turkey woods and turkey hunting is the fact that we could do it with our friends and with our family, just like Tyler and Matthew did in this hunt. Man, time of fellowship means a lot, especially when you're doing it in God's great outdoors. Through this hunt, I reflected back and I'm reminded of friendships and family bonds that are brought together because of the love of a bird, the love of the wild turkey. But I also began to reflect upon friendships and friends and how the Bible tells us that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Listen, when I can't get a hold of my friends here, I'm thankful that I've got a heavenly father that is a friend, that is a brother, that is sticking closer than a brother to me. I can call on him at any point in time. That's the great thing about Jesus. He's always there for you. Lean on him, trust in him, and rely on him to get you through your day-to-day -day walk of life. just a fact. Without the great wild turkey, there would be no mossy oak. You know, as a company, we're way more than just camouflage. From our commitment to conservation to all the traditions we pass on to future generations. And like it is with any true obsession, those things that drove us in the beginning still drive us today. Praise God. Springtime is finally here. When it gets to be around the 1st of uh, April and you work at Mossy Oak, you start to get pretty excited that turkey season's right around the corner. The real grand turkeys are breed unto themselves. 
they're a bird that you can call at and you can call aggressively. It's just so much fun to get these birds because they're only a week or two out of being all grouped up and now they're starting to break up a little bit. It's great to have the opportunity to come to the Southwest and, and uh, get after them because they're, they're, just a, they're just a whole nother breed. This morning, which is our third, our third day of hunting, we went to a roost. This morning, we set up away from them, and as they do, they flew down out of the roost, and they went diametric opposite of where we thought they were gonna go. So after the fly down and they moved on, they were gonna walk around out in those hills and strut in those little green patches and, and they had some hens with them. So, you know, they were gonna go out for an afternoon of doing whatever real grand turkeys do in the afternoon. And it, so the spot we ended at this morning, we decided that, you know what, we're going back there tonight because those turkeys are gonna come back out of those hills. We set up probably, I don't know, we were still four or 500 yards from where they wanted to go. So we kind of got in between and in a spot that we'd already picked out. It was just a pretty spot, green grass in front of us, some hills and knobs and stuff. I got a good feeling about this spot. We talked about it this morning when we left here, so. That was a cool, that was a cool hunt. You, you gotta love it. That was textbook real hunt right there. That was awesome.
Yeah, beautiful bird. These reels in Oklahoma are beautiful. And I couldn't be happier. 58 years old, but I'm telling you right now, it's just a heart pounding moment. It was just, it's like one of the coolest things ever. You know, I used to travel a lot doing the Primo stuff and the Mossy Oak stuff, but I've done hundreds and hundreds of seminars. And every time I gave a seminar on Turkey Hunter, I'd say a couple of things. First, I would look out across the audience and I'd say, okay, half you people know as much as I do about turkey hunting, the other half know more. I'm fixing to show you what I've learned carrying that big camera around. That would kind of relax everybody and say, well, he's not trying to be all that. But the name or the theme or the topic of my seminar every time was there are no absolutes. And I don't care who you are or where you turkey hunt or how much grand slams you have. I'm telling you in turkey hunting, there are no absolutes. I don't care how good you think you are. Turkeys will humble you. I'll give you a quick example of that. My dad, 20 year army guy, great fisherman. He didn't hunt much. And as his health was declining a little bit later in life, I wanted to take him on a turkey hunt really bad. And I had a place about 30 miles from my hometown and I had found a turkey gobbling his brains off in the afternoon. So I took my dad back that morning. This turkey had one of the best gobbles ever. And he wasn't shy about it. Full roll, bow, just rolling it out there. Got him sat down, didn't work out. Turkey got over to the left, thought I heard a hen, moved him two or three times. Some of the best gobbling I ever heard. Couldn't keep up with the turkey. He was a rambler. And uh, anyway, my dad said, hey, he said, son, I get it. I had a great time, let's go. So now I'm going back. Same turkey, within 50 yards of where he was roosted the day before, set up on him four different times. Still gobbling, great. I was loving this, didn't kill him the second day. I had to go to work. It was like the fourth day I went back, he was roosted almost in the exact same place the morning I had my dad. And uh, so I, I came to him from another direction. I was using all my mental skills, you know. So anyway, long story short, I finally got sat down in the right place. There was one little rise at the end of a pasture. He was down on the other side of that rise, gobbling good. So I shut up and he picked up on his gobbling. He's getting closer. And then I could hear that top that hill, Jake. Had a beard about that long, tail feathers on the outside short. Well, 100% absolute Jake. And I came within a millimeter of shooting. I already had the safety off, was looking at the head. Only reason I didn't shoot when his head popped up, there were some leaves or uh, a little brush pile right there. But that just goes to show you, in my mind, I was having this great back and forth with a five-year-old turkey with spurs that long, and it turned out to be a jake. Like I said, there are no absolutes. Back to the content. Back in the wild again Felt right at home Where I belong I had that feeling Coming over me again Just like it happened So many times before So many times Spirit of the woods is like an old good friend Makes me feel warm and good inside And I know his name 
it's good to see him again. Cause in the wind, he's still alive. Oh, Fred Bear, walk with me down the trails again. Take me back, back where I For too long It was kind of dark Another misty dusk And it came from a tangle Down below And I tried to remember Everything it taught me so well Or in a hunter's dream The moment of truth is here and now I felt his touch, I felt his guiding hand The buck was mine forevermore Because of Fred Bear I can walk down the trails again It takes me back Takes me back where I belong. Take me back. Fred Bear, I'm glad to have you at my side, my friend. And I will join you on the big hunt for too long. Hunting is a way of life for the Nugent family. I mean, we're modern warriors and we all have modern walks of life that we tread, but I think that. All of my power, all of my sense of belonging, all of my sense of duty to families, to community, comes from a hunting culture, a hunting culture that's alive and well in 1996 and beyond. And in the spring, the Nugent family plants trees and we tend the garden and we, we take part in the rebirth of nature. In the summertime, we take advantage of the optimum growing conditions of that season of summer. And uh, we watch the game and we watch the non-game and we watch the ground fruit. During the fall we know that the season of harvest is one of responsibility and that if you fail to harvest the beans from the field they will rot and go to waste. We won't allow that to happen. And the same with game. We understand that Thanksgiving takes place in November because we're thanking God for the bounty of the harvest that takes place during the natural third cycle of nature. And uh, understanding the source and the quality of our sustenance comes directly from our efforts and our stealth, our woodsmanship, our relationship with nature in the game that we harvest the surplus of to sustain ourselves. I think it, um, it drives home the reality of man's relationship with the ground beyond the pavement. We're a working hard, playing hard family who truly respects nature as a thinking, reasoning predator and regulates and restricts our harvest of a necessary surplus to maintain balance. And I think that equation in life is directly applicable to a guitar playing, welding, being a teacher, being a parent, being a professional in any walk of life. And I think that the hunting culture is far more than just a take it or leave it sidetrack for the Nugent family. I think it's the source of everything that we do. I hear you, Fred. I feel the campfire, Fred down in Mississippi tonight. We got the spirit running strong.
Beautiful big turkey, man. Happy spring, 1997. It's official. It is the first season of the year, the season of rebirth and planting and harvest. Nothing means more to me than all the hunting than harvesting one of these guys. They are, in my opinion, God's yeah. finest country. I think Ben Franklin had a good idea. They should have been the symbol of America because they're more wary. Yeah, and they sustain my family. That's right. Thank you, Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We started Drury Outdoors the same year we met Toxie Hayes, which was 1989. Since that time, over the past 35 years, it's the only pattern we've worn, and it's gotten us closer to game time and time again. And I think my favorite pattern, no secret, my favorite thing to hunt are wild turkey, so my favorite pattern coincides with that. It's Mossy Oak Obsession. Uh, first of all, I love the name. It's built for hunters like yourself or myself or Terry that are obsessed about the outdoors and getting closer to game. And, Wild Turkey is the ultimate inspection committee as far as I'm concerned. And there's something about obsession until you see it in the woods, until you feel it working with a, a turkey coming into 20, 30 yards with no clue that you're there. That's when you really know that you're sold. And I think camouflage is, is about more than just blending in. Um, you know, I look at, at different people with, that wear different patterns and some stick out and some blend in. I always want that one that blends in. and. Uh, it really comes to fruition when you blend in and create a moment and have that feeling with your buddies or with someone else that you're sharing the turkey woods with or the deer woods. It's all about concealment and making more of those moments so that you have those for a lifetime. Uh, for me, there's gonna be one pattern that I wear my whole life. I'll probably be buried in it and that's Mossy Oak. And uh, I love Mossy Oak's obsession in the spring. Again, the name and the look and the feel and it's more than just concealment. It's about the, uh, the emotions that go with it. Three birds down here in Iowa the same morning. Can't beat it. We're going to go out this morning and see if we can have some fun with Forrest and uh, get after some birds. We're going to a farm we've not been to yet, even though it's May the 6th. Forrest and I went and roosted there last night. And they were talking pretty good. Yeah, they were. I mean, hit the coyote howler, heard them gobble a couple different times, thought they were right where you wanted them to be. So you guys have been there before. You're going to get in there, see if we can make it happen. So we're debating this morning because we've got a little stiffer breeze than we anticipated. So we're debating whether we put the blind up or not. So we'll go up there, feel what it's like on top. And if the blind's fluttering at all, we will not sit in that blind because one thing we've learned through the years, if you've got wind movement on your blind, it, it generally flares the turkey. So. We'll go check it out on top and make a decision. We might be sitting in the brush. Well, got in here, got the blind popped up and decided that it wasn't shimmering too much. So got the decoys out, maybe an XHDR jake, and then and, uh, got all settled in. We're in here plenty early, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get a big old long beard come across this pasture this morning. It'll be real pretty.
six different turkeys all around us. These are the closest ones. There they are right there. Which one? To the right of them. That right of that cedar tree. Just to the right of that one cedar. Gotcha. There's three of them. That was awesome. Nice job. Man, that was sweet. The turkey came a long way. He did. did. And from behind us. He was one of those ones we roosted last night and he didn't gobble till late. These ones, I mean, they were hot and come up and like something. And this one come up. Man, that was pretty. That was awesome. That was awesome. Bingo, yeah. baby. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Oh. Hey, look like you had two pretty long beards. <laughs> or, or it's either that or just one split, you know, it's just split, but it looked like two big beards. All <laughs> the beard drop going on. <laughs> it's not a dumb beard, it's just a little ratchet. Awesome stuff, though. Thank you. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a double beard. <laughs> well, it was like all split. Well, like it was all split apart like that. <laughs> He's barely got a single beer. <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. It was about a pretty morning as you could ask for up it here. It really was. It was it was gorgeous. I mean, we came in, reached these birds last night, and uh, there's three of them that were really hot right out in front of us, and this one uh, this one was back behind us, and he gobbled really, really good. You got him fired up there, and he marched on in. It was fun. It was. Yeah, the three came up, and they didn't finish. They either didn't like the blind or decoys one, or the call one, one of the three. And uh, then this guy came from, I would say at least four or 500 yards. He came from a long way. And then he came out in the field and made it happen with the Winchester. Oh yeah, a little 20 gauge, man. We've killed a lot of turkeys with it this year and it's been absolutely awesome. So it doesn't get any better than this. Fun morning. Thank you. All right, we've got the DOD final roost from HS here, a signature series from Drury's and HS. It's a great call. I love this call for a lot of different reasons. Whether you're taking this call to the Florida Flatwoods or you're here in Iowa, or you're out west where it's blowing in Montana, 30, 40 mile an hour on a, on a mountainside, this call is going to project the sound you need to strike that bird. And what I mean by that is I use this call a lot when I'm searching for a bird, whether it's mid morning or maybe you're in a, a state where you can evening hunt and uh, you've got some weather conditions. This call is gonna cut through the wind, cut through the sound and get to the bird and hopefully you can hear it gobble. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by Hunter Specialties, serious hunting tools. Here we go. <laughs> All right, forest kill one this morning. We had a great hunt. We we're getting ready to go help Perry and Coon Dog because they're struggling mightily this morning. Perry's yelping too loud, hanging birds up. We were heading over there. We saw a bird here on, on this particular farm. So we said, well, we'll try to kill this one and then go show them both birds because they're not gonna kill with the way Perry's yelping. <laughs>
baby. That was fun. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he came on a string, man. He sure did. Woo! That was fun. How much fun was that? Awesome. That was fun. Did you see it? No, I, I heard him gobble when I was like, well, close, and then I was like, wow. I didn't, like I said, I was trying to get down, and the hill didn't have enough roll for me to. Yeah, but we were both down when he come over. Like, yeah. We had great back cover there. Yeah. We could hear a storm off to the west, and he got in there close, he updated him a little bit, he gobbled. Wade said he was on him, so I had a good clean shot at him, and was able to Take the shot and kill him. She's coming down now. We, we, I mean, that was on the edge. We were sitting there working that turkey. Lightning struck close. We could hear a storm coming from the west. Killed the turkey, got out of there. It was a tillable field, so we had to get the truck out of there as well. So we haven't sat down and enjoyed the moment yet, but we got him in the truck. He's dry, and uh, we'll wait for this to pass and then enjoy the moment just a little bit more. But we wanted, we wanted to get him out of that field and get us out of that field. Well, of course, we've had a morning. It's been it's been pretty fun. Made the trip up last night, and we've had a heck of a morning. Heck of a morning. Forrest was able to kill one this morning out of a muddy ground blind on top of a beautiful pasture ridge. Then we were heading over to show Forrest Bird to Dustin, Coot Dog, and Perry. They've not had luck yet. And on the way, we spotted this bird out in this big tillable field, and we were like, man, we can make a play, and, and we made the play. Put the Winchester to work. It did, man. Just a great morning. Two down here on May the 6th, and. What a fantastic start to the month of May. Awesome. Good job, dog. I think there's some butts that are hurting because they haven't killed a turkey yet. We just saw some back here on this field. It'd be a shame if we got here and Dustin killed one right away. Not that we're competitive. They all met up. Yeah. One wouldn't finish, and then they came yeah. and finished it. <laughs> Good stuff. Where I was at, I could see his phone screen. So he was watching. See what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Forrest, you've seen some action. Definitely awesome. Three birds this morning. It's been fun. I love coming to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going back or going to move up? Uh, uh, that was fun though, huh? It was great, yeah. Congratulations, Dustin. Appreciate it. Fun, fun hunt. Three birds down here in Iowa the same morning. Can't beat it. I'm Daniel Hayes here at the Malsier Cabin, and today we're cooking smash burgers. 
Uh, this is elk meat. Pretty much every time we're cooking these, we're either using uh, deer or elk, and we've got a little elk left over. The good thing about smash burgers is you can prep all the patties beforehand, make these nice little patties. They're gonna smash down pretty thin, so <clears throat> usually we're cooking doubles. It doesn't take but three minutes maybe uh, on medium high heat to get these patties ready to serve. So if you're cooking for a big crowd, we've got the smaller two burner griddle today with cast iron on one side. So we're just gonna be doing a few patties at a time. But if you've got a big crowd and you've got a bigger burner, you can crank through these patties a bunch at a time if you're serving for a lot of people. So anyway, we're gonna get started. So there's a lot of little different ways that people like to do their smash burgers, but you usually need a little bit of oil fat under your patty. It really doesn't matter what you do, but it's kind of fun to use the squirt mayo. So uh, that's usually what I use. So put a little bit of mayo down, drop patty on there. Like I said, we're doing four patties at a time on this little burner. We've got the griddle up to medium high heat and it's probably a little above that right now. It's pretty piping hot. What I usually like to do, you can do it either way. If you drop the onions down on top, it'll usually keep the meat from sticking to the spatula. But if you give it a little sear when they're still balled up and then flip it, then you can smash it on top where the meat is and it won't stick. So drop a little bit of onion on top and you can go ahead and smash the heck out of it because the thinner the better, it gets a little crispy. It's gonna be nice and juicy. Everything cooks quick. Gets a good hard sear. And the good thing about dropping the onions on here is that they get scattered all over the griddle. So if you really like cooked onions, you got a lot of little bits all along the side that you're gonna drop on the burger at the end of it. So it really just takes about two minutes and you'll see the edges of the burgers will start to look done before you're ready to flip. About two minutes when you're cooking on medium high. All we put on top of there is salt and pepper and you can wait and throw that on after they're already smashed down on the griddle. Sprinkle a little bit. I like a lot of black pepper but seasoned salt and pepper to taste. All right, so these are ready to flip. What we're gonna do when we flip them over is flip and then immediately add the cheese. And usually, right when the cheese gets melted, the burgers are ready to eat. They don't need but about a minute on this side. And we're making doubles, so if you wanna get a light on the cheese and just toss one slice on there, that's cool. But, you know, I'll say the more the merrier. Usually about this time, We'll have another burner on low, get that good and buttered, and then drop a couple of your buns face down on there. Makes it a little less messy than putting the butter on the outside. Gets it nice and toasty. All this, the, the buns and the patties will be ready all at about the same time. So if you've got a, a platter to drop them on when you're finished, everything kind of Buns are toasty, cheese is melty. You can flip the patties over right on top of each other and then drop them straight onto the bun. Just like that, probably three minutes from start to finish. Perfectly toasted buns, perfectly melted cheese, perfect meat, and they're good to eat. There you have it. We got six double smash elk burgers right here. So beginning to end, literally three minutes to a delicious looking burger. Make sure you get all the uh, patties patted out beforehand because that makes everything run smoothly whenever you got your whole station out beside the grill, but any grill master already knows that. Cheese on top after you flip it butter the buns, add a little pickles on top of there if you want to, and anything else you need to know you can find in the, in the copy. But Wild Game Smash Burgers, there you have it.
on my hair. Kill him. Kill him. All right, Patrick, pull your head net off so we can see your face. Thank the Lord for your blessings today. <laughs> We've worked mighty hard for it. I want to thank Mossy Oak and them too. Thank you, cuz. Right down to the wire. And you got the show. <laughs> Holy cow. Congratulations, big man. That's awesome. Ooh, he got some hooks on him, too. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I feel a little weird. Yeah. And everybody says it. It ain't about killing a turkey, but it kind of is for us. Mm -hmm. And that might, that's probably going to be his only one and only chance for an Osceola. Yeah. I think he's from wherever, Tennessee or Kentucky or somewhere. Uh -huh. And that, 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 my friends, is a good feeling right there. It's the guts and it's the glory. A hundred stripes, a hundred stories It's the Pledge of Allegiance on the 4th of July It's some handwritten letters from home It's some sleepless nights alone It's his newborn baby he left with his wife Mr. Red, White and Blue It was pretty fabulous. It was just an awesome, awesome hunt. That group right there, uh, Mon I think it was Monday night. Yeah, Monday night or Tuesday night, whenever. They, they kind of told some of their stories. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, some of those backstories those guys have are hard to listen to. Yeah. And you, you, you don't share that and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, holy cow. And they're talking about how cool it is and all that. And you, you really, really, really realize how you're not worthy to be there but it means something to For two or three days, they get to feel special. As they should. Yeah, and they get to hear Keith hollering at me about my tube call, and everybody's <laughs> picking on Bubba, and Greg can't hear, and, you know, it's they're, they're just part of the gang there after a while. But they, uh, if it makes them forget anything they're worried about for two or three days, then mission accomplished. And good for the Florida Cattlemen's Association, Keith and Ron and those guys working their butt off. Toxie. Just saying, do whatever you need to do. God bless them all. It's a very special, special thing. Marching line, 
Marching line. Week seven, only three more weeks left to go. I, I'm assuming a lot of you people are already turkey hunting. I know I've already been. You follow all the social media at, at Mossy Oak, you kind of see what's going on. High hopes for this turkey season. Everybody was seeing a lot of polls. I think the season's going to be a little better. Let it, hey, let us know what your turkey season's like. But more than that, don't forget, next Wednesday, seven days, we'll be right back here with more of Mossy Oak Turkey Season 2024. See you then.